Having made up his mind, he crept along as cleverly as he could. Hobbits are clever at quietness, especially in woods, as I have already told you. Also, Bilbo had slipped on his ring before he started, and that is why the spiders neither saw nor heard him coming. He had picked his way stealthily for some distance when he noticed a place of dense black shadow ahead of him, black even for that forest, like a patch of midnight that had never been cleared away. As he drew nearer, he saw that it was made by spider webs, one behind and over and tangled with another. Suddenly he saw too that there were spiders, huge and horrible, sitting in the branches above him, and ring or no ring, he trembled with fear lest they should discover him. Standing behind a tree, he watched a group of them for some time. And then in the silence and stillness of the wood, he realized that these loathsome creatures were speaking one to another. Their voices were a th sort of thin creaking and hissing, but he could make out many of the words that they said. They were talking about the dwarves. It was a sharp struggle, but worth it, said one. What nasty thick skins they have to be sure, but I'll wager there is a good juice inside. Aye, they'll make fine eating when they've hung a bit, said another. Don't hang them too long, said a third. They're not as fat as they might be. Been feeding none too well of late, I should guess. Kill them, I say, hissed a fourth. Kill them now and hang them dead for a while. They are dead now, I'll warrant, said the first. That they are not. I saw one a struggling just now, just coming round again, I should say, after a beautiful sleep. I'll show you. With that, one of the fat spiders ran along a rope till it came to a dozen bundles hanging in a row from a high branch. Bilbo was horrified, now that he noticed them for the first time dangling in the shadows, to see a dwarvish foot sticking out of the bottom of some of the bundles, or here and there the tip of a nose, or a bit of a beard, or of a hood. To the fattest of these bundles the spider went. Oh, it's poor old Bomber, I'll bet, thought Bilbo, and nipped hard at the nose that stuck out. There was a muffled yelp inside, and a toe shot up and kicked the spider straight and hard. There was life in Bombo still. There was a noise like the kicking of a flabby football, and the enraged f spider fell off the branch, only catching itself with its own thread just in time. The others laughed. You were quite right, they said. The meat's alive and kicking. I'll soon put an end to that, hissed the angry spider, climbing back onto the branch. Bilbo saw that the moment had come when he must do something. He could not get up at the brutes, and he had nothing to shoot with. But looking about, he saw that in this place there were many stones lying in what appeared to be a now dry little watercourse. Bilbo was a pretty fair shot with a stone, and it did not take him long to find a nice, smooth, egg-shaped one that fitted his hand cosily. As a boy, he used to practice throwing stones at things until rabbits and squirrels and even birds got out of his way as quick as lightning if they saw him stoop. And even grown up, he had still spent a deal of his time uh, at coits, dart throwing, shooting at the wand, bowls, nine pins, and other quiet games of aiming and throwing. Indeed, he could do lots of things, besides blowing smoke rings, asking riddles, and cooking that I haven't had time to tell you about, and there's no time now. While he was picking up stones, the spider had reached Bombo, and soon he would have been dead. At that moment, Bilbo threw. The stone struck the spider plunk on the head, and it dropped senseless off the tree, flopped to the ground with all its legs curled up. The next stone went whizzing through a big web, snapping its cords and taking off the spider sitting in the middle of it, whack, dead. After that there was a great deal of commotion in the spider colony, and they forgot the dwarves for a bit, I can tell you. They could not see Bilbo but they could make a good guess at the direction from which the stones were coming. As quick as lightning, they came running and swinging towards the hobbit, flinging out their long threads in all directions, till the air seemed full of waving snares. Bilbo, however, soon slipped away to a different place. The idea came to him to lead the furious spiders further and further away from the dwarves, if he could. 
to make them curious, excited, and angry all at once. When about fifty had gone off to the place where he had stood before, he threw some more stones at these and at others that had stopped behind. Then, dancing among the trees, he began to sing a song to infuriate them and to bring them all after him, and also to let the dwarves hear his voice. This is what he sang. Old fat spider spinning in a tree, old fat spider can't see me. At a cop, at a cop, won't you stop? Stop your spinning and look for me. Old Tom Noddy, all big body, old Tom Noddy can't spy me. At a cop, at a cop, down you drop, you'll never catch me up your tree. Not very good, perhaps, but then you must remember that he had to make it up himself on the spur of a very awkward moment. It did what he wanted anyway. As he sang, he threw some more stones and stamped. Practically all the spiders in the place came after him. Some dropped to the ground. Others raced along the branches, swung from tree to tree, or cast new ropes across the dark spaces. They made for his noise far quicker than he had expected. They were frightfully angry. <laughs> 